Hello, and welcome to Zoom Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Explorer, we're going to take a look at one of four golden functions. Does that sound exciting? We're giving a talk on these four golden functions. Uh, and they can be used by anybody, not just in Zim. They were created for Zim to help Zim be easily coded, we'll call it. So, uh, let's take a look, shall we? Uh, just find the cursor. There's the cursor. Hey, all right. The first one is duo. So of these golden functions, Zim and duo. And that lets you pass in parameters traditionally, such as this, null, null, purple, null, null, 20, or as a configuration object. And here's an example of a configuration object, the squiggly brackets with property names that match the parameter name. So drag has a parameter called on top, according to the documentation. So we can do it this way and go directly there. Do you see how that could be handy? If we take a look at the documentation, for instance, under I don't know, button, there's lots of parameters. If we wanted to get to an align parameter or something like that, we don't want to pass in this many nulls. Actually, we need to use undefined these days. You can use nulls in Zim, but with ES6, uh, if you're using default parameters, undefined is the way to get to the default parameters. Uh, anyway, we don't want to pass in a bunch of those and get to a line here. And sometimes even if we're making, for instance, a rectangle, which we'll do, it might have been easier to specify in that case the color and the corner rather than all these nulls in here. So let's drop into some code and see what that uh, means in practice, shall we? To do, I'll reduce that down. And here's some code. We're looking at the duo this time. We've brought in Duo as well. Duo is part of Zim. Actually, it's um, a thing called uh, Zob for ob object uh, literal, but it's um, it's part of Zim. But we've what we've done with these is we've separated them out into their own GitHub repository, so you can use it. And certainly, that will work with JavaScript, or you could even probably convert it into some other language if you needed to as well. So it is an independent bunch of code and you can set this up so that your functions uh, also can receive normal parameters or uh, configuration object. As far as I know, that's unique. I haven't seen any other library do that yet. It's extremely handy. So let's try it out. A new rectangle new rectangly, and as we had before, you saw a null for the width, a null for the height, and then a color of purple, and then null for the border color, I think it is, and then null, so you have to know, you have to remember that kind of stuff, and it's a little bit harder to remember the order of things than it is to remember the, um, the occasional uh, parameter name, because the, the names kind of make sense. And now here we're at the corner, and we go 20, we'll dot center that on the stage. Let's make it a bit bigger as well, dot ska, three. <laughs> we could have made it bigger by passing in numbers here. And we'll dot drag that, drag. <clears throat> we'll leave the drag as, as default. Okay, save this up, and we can refresh here. There it is, corner. Now note when we drag it, when we pick it up, it automatically comes up onto the top. <coughs> that is uh, the default for Zim drag to do that. So if we want it not to come up to the top, but stay behind these things, which were made later, then we would want to get to the on top parameter on top. And we don't want to be putting in a whole bunch of nulls to get there. So we can just say on top false like so. The other thing is uh, that's a little bit lengthy as well uh, and a bit unclear. I don't know what 20 is. Like what is 20? Is that the border uh, thickness? Yeah, I'm not sure. But if you if you convert to the squiggly brackets here, then you can go directly to the color. <laughs> of course, there you go. You got to spell out the word color and that might take you a few tries. You never know. We'll make this one blue this time and corner colon um, sure, 20. There you go. So that's the, the, the Zim Duo technique going to the configuration object instead. Uh, 
We refresh this. And there you go, blue not coming up on top. Nice, huh? So that's how uh, almost everything in Zim, anything that has a lot of parameters that some may be uh, default, uh, we put into Zim Duo. But in non-Zim, you can use it as well. You would have to go to the GitHub, uh, Dan's End GitHub, and we'll put a link in this video, and get Duo, and bring that in. And then you can say, for instance, function test a comma b where'd that b go a comma b comma c and in here is where you would cut and paste the code from the docs i never really remember what it's uh, doing exactly this code right here will take a look at the first parameter or will take a look at the parameters in general and if there's only one parameter and that parameter is a squiggly bracket or an object literal it will assume the zim duo uh, that if you want to drop or uh, go over to the configuration object thing and what it does is it looks at the inside of that configuration object it sees all any parameter names in there and it reruns the function and puts those parameters in order as as regular parameters. So uh, that's what this is doing right here. Do you want to see? Well, let's see it work, and then I'll show you the function. We've got the function right here. I'll uh, show you the function, introduce you to that a little bit. We can console.log a comma b comma c, and then we can run it. Test one comma undefined comma two, or do you want three? Eh, whatever. That's one way to run it, and the other way to run it is test, and A is 1, and C is 3. Cool. Shorter. What do you know? So we save that, and let's run it in a browser. F12. Check that thing out. And there it is twice saying 1 undefined 3. Or indeed, if we change that to a 4 or something like that, we can see that it is indeed running twice. Okay, can you see that? Neat. So that's your own function being turned into a Zim Duo function. Now there's a couple things that we have to watch out for. One is if this code here is minified, if you put it in a library and it's going to be minified or what have you, then the names of these will no longer be the the real parameter names they'll be converted into really short things probably to save space so we scratched our head and came up with a solution var sig is equal to put quotes there you just take these things whatever they are they probably be longer than abc remember the button for instance you just copy those paste them into there like that uh, this string will not be minified so it will keep the proper names and then you pass that in here as the next parameter, sig. Now this can be minified and it will still work. Uh, the other thing is if you run test, if test is instead of a function, we make it a class, uh, that would match. These things have to match. Then I would have test in here and we'd be using the new keyword, new test. That would appear to work. And I'll save this. Now, I did mention I wanted to see the Zim Duo, but I'll we'll, we'll peek at that in just a second then. Um, remind me, will you? So a refresh here. It appears to work, as long as we saved it. It appears to work, but it's not actually working properly. Uh, what's happening is it will run this one as a class, and that's great. When it gets to here, it says, good, we've already got our parameters. I don't have, need to rerun this thing, so we'll console.log. Everything will be good. Uh, the second case, it runs this as a class and makes an object from it, um, passes these in, and it says, oh, no, 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 that's not, uh, these aren't real parameters. We're going to rerun this. So it reruns it, but when it reruns it, it runs it as a function. It doesn't use the new keyword. So to, uh, we could see that, for instance, if we say this dot x is equal to 7, for instance, like so. And then we'll store this in a constant, const uh, t is equal to, and this would be t2, for instance. And then in here we will say uh, zog t dot 
x, and this will be t2. So now what we've got going on is we've made an object in each case, and we're asking for the x property of that object, which is 7 stored on this. And watch what happens. This one will work fine because we are dealing with an object. This one will not work fine because it, the second time it runs, it wasn't run as a class. It was run as a function. So we refresh here. And we've got 1, 3, and there's the 7. 1, 4, undefined. So to fix that, you pass in a reference to the, uh, the object this. So as soon as you do that, you're good to go. So this is how all of Zim is set up. Oh, shall we run this? Save that. And refresh here. And there's the 7 that we were indeed looking for. This is how all Zim is set up for all of its classes. Is this system right here where we can minify it. And uh, if it's a class we're passing in, that is the fourth parameter of Duo. Yet if it's a function, you don't need that. I suspect it still works, but if, and we do have Zim functions as well, such as Zim animate, uh, for instance, up here. If we want to animate this, we can go dot animate. And right away, we'll, I know I want to loop and rewind. And if we were to take a look at animate out here, animate, loop and rewind is way the heck down here. So there's rewind. And I don't want to put in this many undefines and loop is right there. So if I want to loop and animate, I know that I'm probably going to want to drop into the Zim Duo technique right here. The properties will animate the alpha to zero. And we will say rewind colon true. We'll rewind that. The order doesn't matter and we will loop it as well. So that's another nice thing. The order actually doesn't matter. And that's quite readable, isn't it? Uh, if you're doing a short animation, you just want it to fade something out, you could just say alpha colon zero comma 1000 for the seconds and it would fade out and that was a very short animation or well, quickly uh, written. So we save that up and let's check it out here, refresh here, and there she is rewinding and looping to fade that circle. You see how handy the Zim Duo technique is? And now you can use that too for your uh, fine bits of functions and stuff like that. So uh, this has been a uh, Zim Explore and I am Dr. Abstract. <laughs> And what are you supposed to remind me? <laughs> You're supposed to remind me, hey, Dr. Abstract, let's turn that thing down again. Uh, no, no, no. And we're back, yes, for the second part of Zim Explorer to show you the Zim Duo itself. <laughs> so, so I don't think we popped into here. I'm not going to go through this, obviously. But you may have uh, been interested in at least seeing what the code is like. So here's Zim Duo, the code that does that. We're checking to see if it's a constructor, if there's only... Uh, or sorry, if, if it's a squiggly brackets uh, and there's only one of them, then we assume it is duo. Uh, this is Zim Duo determining uh, if it's duo, it's splitting up, getting those properties. And uh, <laughs> yeah, one nice thing about it is it will tell you, oh, oh heck, there shouldn't be a zog in there. Yeah, there shouldn't be a zog in there. I caught a little bug. If there was a bad argument, it would look for zog, and zog is in Zim, so that has to be a console.log, so I'm glad I caught that. Um, anyway, it tells you whether there's a bad argument or a bad parameter name that you've used. Neat, huh? But anyway, don't ask me to describe that in an explorer. That was uh, some bit of coding to be able to compile and make that all work there in that manner. Pretty tricky stuff. Uh, the the height of JavaScript. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, but you're welcome to use it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been a Zim Explorer. So let's see. We'll, uh, we'll get back to the Explorer. Here we are. Oh, a Zim Explorer. Come on in and uh, visit us, by the way, at uh, zimjs.com slash slack and ask any questions that you want about this and say hi and stuff. And the Zim Duo is up, oh, well, just Duo is up on GitHub under the Dan Zen repository. 
and leave a star or something like that there too. And for ZimJS, which is also there, give us a star. Yeah, that'd be nice. Woohoo! Ciao. Lots of stars as we explore.